Hey, Fort Thomas, as we head into testing season, I wanted to take a few minutes to go over some of the things in the TestNav testing platform that I've noticed that might help make it a little bit easier for your students to take the test. Uh, as you know, like there's that old study that shows that when students know how to take a test, like a bubble and Scantron test, that they perform a lot better and with a lot more confidence on a standardized test. So the theory is that if you give them practice in that medium, that they're going to be tested in, in a high stakes way, that they'll perform better later. We can do things like that or draw attention to certain things in a testing platform that will allow our students to be a little more successful. Digital learners are very visual in nature and TestNav taps into some of those visual cues to help them perform better on the test. And I'm going to point those out to you as we move into the test. When students first enter the testing platform, I like to acquaint them with what is at the top of the screen. So at the top, we have the navigation where they move to and from different questions. They have review where they can jump to a, a specific question. They have a bookmark where they could bookmark the question if they want to come back to it later. There's the pointer, which is what is on there now. Um, and they can highlight by dragging. Okay. There's also a notepad if they wanted to take notes, an answer eliminator if they want to cross things off, and a calculator, this would be for the math test. Over here under the person icon, students are able to change the background and foreground of the color. I would actually encourage our digital learners to pick a color combination that feels easy on their eyes um, and have them during the test practice time go through this and identify the ones that work for them. Now, some of it is just personal preference, like maybe their favorite color is pink, but for some students, they might look at this gray and think that the words stand out better for them or the black and think that this is easier to read. For me, I actually prefer the blue with the black text, I could not tell you why, but if I was going to be staring at this platform for hours, this would help it be easier on my eyes. So encouraging them to pick something that feels like a relief to their eyes, whether it's just their preference or favorite color or not, is something that we should encourage them to do. Okay, the next thing under their personal profile here is they can choose to enable a magnifier uh, which would obviously be for students who are visually impaired, possibly. Um, and they can show a line mask reader. The line mask reader is actually a pretty helpful tool because what happens is when our digital readers are reading online, their eye tends to drift around the page a little bit. So this helps keep them on track. It's kind of like the digital form of putting your finger under the text and... Um, focusing on the specific line of text. So that would be something that they might want to try using. Um, they can turn that on and off just by clicking under the person and um, checking show line reader mask and turning it on and off. Okay, they can enable answer masking where it helps reveal each of those answers that might help keep them from being distracted and focus on the actual question and the question stems. All right, and then um, of course in this one there's a tutorial. So those are just the basic things across the top that I draw attention to when I'm helping a student learn how to use the testing platform. All right, so the next thing I want to do is talk about some of the text features that are inside of the test that we can draw our students' attention to that will help them answer the questions in full. So the first thing that I would point out is that a lot of times inside of these uh, text boxes where we might have a passage, there's going to be a scroll bar. This mimics like what you would see on a website. If students see a scroll bar, they need to know that they have to scroll further. Because if they aren't paying attention, they might think that the text ends right here. Also, if they're not reading the question stems, they might not realize that there's oh, multiple paragraphs or that these numbers refer to the paragraphs. So doing something simple like having students identify paragraph numbers when they're talking in class is going to help them get used to referring 
back to different paragraphs inside of a digital text. So make sure that they're looking for the scroll bar. The other visual cue that we as teachers might miss, and it would be helpful for our students to know, is that when you see a circle radial dial for them to select an answer, that means that the test is only looking for one answer. On this question, this is a math question, it says select two correct answers. You'll notice that these are squares. When students see squares, they'll be expected to answer more than one answer. So the answer is not complete until they've given two. And so here I've selected one, and if I move on to the next question and I look at my review, it's showing me that I didn't answer the question, which is really helpful. But I might go back to that and say, I answered the question, there's a check mark there. In reality, I meant to have two. So teaching students to look for the squares and circles and that the squares mean that we have two answers or more and the circles are just one will help them catch on to the idea that they're gonna have two correct answers. Another thing I encourage students to do when they are reading a passage is that they should take a little highlighting tool and highlight the title because when they switch to the next question, if the same question set is about the same passage, it'll keep their highlighting. So when they get to a new passage, that will disappear and they'll, they'll realize that they have to read again. So that's a visual cue that they can use to help them read or know when they have to read an entire passage again. And then they would need to look for that scroll bar to scroll down. So I would encourage them to use different colors so that they know where they are in the test. And that's something very simple. There is a notepad, but I don't usually encourage students to take notes on the notepad. I would encourage students to take notes on scrap paper. So when you're practicing with students, have them practice taking, jotting down notes on scrap paper, have them practice reading online multiple passages and taking notes and that will help them. Another test question type to look for is the question type that includes multiple reading assignments. If you look up here, this has two reading assignments, one in each tab. And what this is doing is it's mimicking using browser tabs. When you have multiple browser tabs open, they all are lined up like this. So encourage students to make a mental note of whether or not there are multiple tabs at the top of a question to know that they have to refer to multiple passages. So they're looking for tabs, they're looking for scroll bars, and they're looking for the circle versus the square to know how much content they need to consume or how much content they need to give in order to adequately answer a question. Popping over to science, you'll see that this is set up the same exact way. Here we're looking for two best answers. I know that because I see my squares. I see that I have two tabs, so we would need to be navigating between two tabs, and one of them has a scroll bar, so I'm going to have to scroll down to view the entire passage. And this is interesting because as I move through the test, it adds sources. So on the next question here, all of a sudden I have three sources, but two I've already read. So I just have a new one to read. So have them pay attention to um, anything new on the screen and those titles of the tabs to help them know what they have to reread and what they have to start from scratch. And again, just focus on those squares versus circles. So math provides us with an opportunity to look at one specific question type that includes boxes. You'll see this question type in the other tests like social study, science, and reading. And whenever students see blank boxes, they should be adding something to the box. So for example, here, um, it's asking me uh, this question and I'm supposed to move these numbers into the box, right? Now I might just move a two, for example, but there's all these boxes. And when I press review, it's showing that I answered the question. So just because I've got something down there, like it doesn't mean that I answered the question fully. So typically, if students see boxes, they need to have something in the box. 
So that's something to talk to them about as you review this site. They're also going to want to know how to use the math symbols uh, using a Desmos based calculator. Uh, they'll want to know how to create fractions and how when they do that they would then type in the number okay or the mixed fraction see it's like it's going in deep that's not what I meant to do so if something happens that they didn't mean to do it they could clear it all or they can undo so show them how to use those tools if they make a mistake especially if they're using these math symbols and they accidentally add too many symbols in the social study sample you'll see that it is set up quite a bit like the reading sample but here we have multiple sources so just like having four or five sources open on a web browser um, students are going to have to navigate between these different tabs and they'll have some visuals and then they'll have um, some things that have quotes that they'll have to scroll. So you're going to want to train them to move between multiple browsing tabs and you could practice this daily by giving them multiple sources to look at. And then um, in their responses, they have to use evidence from multiple sources. So they'd be expecting the multiple sources here. I would suggest that you have students use paper to write their notes because it's a little easier for them to look down at their notes um, to answer the question than it is to like try to flip between all of these sources or even have this notepad open. Um, it would just be maybe a little more efficient for them to use actual paper for this kind of question. All right, so that's it. It's a lot, <laughs> um, but you can prepare your students for this. And I would suggest that you start by uh, going through the test nav site with them and point some of those things out. I would also suggest that you start giving students more online reading to do where they're navigating between multiple browsers and jotting down notes. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything long. You can see that uh, some of those samples that we looked at, they weren't very long passages, but just having them practice that navigation between tabs and looking up and down is going to help them feel more confident. And for the math, um, definitely give them some opportunities to practice using Desmos calculators and undoing and um, like starting over if they have to. Uh, that will help them be a lot more successful. Uh, if you have questions, if you want help in um, constructing some, you know, examples that you can use in class, or if you need some suggestions for platforms that you might use if Schoology doesn't work for you, please let me know. I'm here to help.